Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. We're going to continue on with 80 column stuff today. Um, I did a little housekeeping here before I started recording so I want to run through that real quick. I just copied, basically copied the comments from each routine up here to the top of the uh, library file so that it's easy, easy to refer to them um, without having to scroll down and find um, each routine when you want to use it to see how you use it. Um, they're just all up here at the top now so we can refer to them easily. Um, we finished off last time uh, with our test file here. Um, we've got routines now to print a character to the screen, print a string to the screen, clear the screen, you know, fill the screen, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we've got the basics down to put text on the screen. Uh, but we haven't. Well, one thing we haven't talked about yet is colors. Um, you can, um, you know, you can change the color of each character on the screen, and we haven't done any of that. So we'll dig into that here. Um, you can't do there, there. You don't have as many color options as you do on the forty column. You don't have multicolor. Um, you, you, know, you don't have sprites. You don't have. You can't change the background color of each character. Or each the background color is solid all the way across. Um, there's no separate border color, so it's basically you've got one background color for the whole screen, and then each character can have its own single color. And so that's what we're going to be dealing with here. Um, the color RAM, the attribute RAM by default starts at 800, um, just like the the text screen starts at zero. Um, the color RAM starts at 800, so I'm going to put that down here at the bottom, we'll call it um, VDC80 Atra. They call it Attribute RAM because um, basically because it, it, it has more than color in it. Four of the bits apply to the color and then the other four bits apply to other things like underline and flash. Um, so we'll use that. Um, here in the init80 text routine We'll init 80 that value um, the same as we did with the um, the VDC 80 RAM value. Um, basically, just since it can be moved, we want to make sure we're actually looking at where it is and not somewhere else. Um, figure out what registers that's in. We've got to check the book here because I don't remember. 20 and 21. Okay, attribute address high and low. High comes first, so and it says a normal mode. It starts at 400. I'm pretty sure that's a typo. This is the this is the 128 internals book, which I really it's got a lot of really good stuff in it, but it also has a ton of typos. You start noticing as you start comparing it with other books. Um, actually, it's not the worst. The worst one is the um, uh, the assembly language book. Um, that one has the most typos, especially in the code, which can be really really rough, but Anyway, so 20 and 21, I'm pretty sure that part's right at least. So we want to read, let's see, what do we want to do here? What this does, okay, this, yeah, this sets register 25, it clears the, the graphics, the text slash graphics bit so that we're in text mode. And then, yeah, lead the loads out of 12 and 13. So we just want to take this right here, duplicate that, and now we want to read from 20 and 21, and we're going to write that to ECD Atra. Okay. Let's add a comment or two here. Um, let's see. Set text mode. Save screen RAM address and save attribute RAM address. All right. I've been a little under the weather for a few days. Hopefully my voice isn't too bad. It's still a little, still a little rough. I think. Um, all right. 
So that will set up the address that we need down here in VDC80, which I believe by default is going to be 800. But anyway, it'll get that for us and, and save it so that our routines can use it. Now, um, let's see. What do we want to do with the attributes? I guess the thing I didn't think too much about what we want to do with them. The one thing I thought was let's just see what they look like. So to see what they look like, um, let's pr let's have a little routine here that um, fills the screen with A's, like I already did. I did I did it once here for a test, just doing it in the monitor. But um, let's do that. Let's get rid of. Uh, let's get rid of this. And actually, let's get rid of this too. We already we've tested this business here, so we don't need that anymore. So to fill the screen with an A, we want to fill 80 text and we just put the character in A and call fill 80 text. So let's load A with 1, that's an A. Alright, so that fills, that fills the screen with A just like it is right now. Now let's point to the attribute RAM and fill it with a rotating value so that it fills it with values from 0 to 255 and then we'll be able to see um, how it goes. Um, so what routine do we want to use for that? We want to position the RAM pointer so that it's pointing at the first location in attribute RAM which we saved in the init routine. Um, to VDC80 Atra. So we want to point this thing, we, we want to position ADXY, or let's, well, no we don't, that's not the that's not the routine we want. We want set RAM pointer. Position ADXY deals with the X and Y coordinates of the screen memory. We don't want that, although we may want a routine that does that, but in attribute memory. That would be a separate thing. For now, let's just set the RAM pointer to point at the start of attribute memory, which has will have the low byte in A, high byte in Y. I have to remember that. Let's copy it because you know my memory. All right, so here we're going to call. We're going to be calling set RAM pointer, but we need to get. So we want the low byte in A. That's going to come from VDC80 Atra. And then the high byte in Y, so that'll be VDC80 Atra plus one. Set the RAM pointer, and now I can get rid of this. All right. So now what we want to do is write values to the screen. Two thousand. We want to write two thousand values to the screen. Um, we'll we'll do two. We'll do two hundred fifty-six at a time. We'll times eight. That's going to overflow a little bit, but that's okay. Um, so we want to loop, let's see, are we going to clobber, what are we going to clobber when we call this thing? We're going to clobber X and, yeah, we're going to, well, we're definitely going to clobber X because every time you write, every time you write anything to the 80 column screen, you're going to use X and Y, you're going to clobber X and Y in the process, um, or sorry, you're going to clobber X and A, just the way we have our routine set up. Um, all right, so we're going to need basically we, we want to loop 2,000 times. We can go we can go 2048 if we need to, which is what I plan to do. Um, I think why the routine we use is going to be print 80 byte that writes a byte to, and I really, I'm going to change the name of this one right now because print makes it sound like it's going on the screen and it's not necessarily, this could go to anywhere. So let's find that and change it everywhere. I 
just realized that was that was a misleading name because okay I've got it changed everywhere um, it was a misleading name because we're not writing it to a screen location we're just writing it to wherever in RAM our RAM pointer is pointing at the moment um, so right is more more clear um, okay so we pass the byte to write in A and one thing my little documentation up here doesn't show is whether that clobbers anything else so let's see it doesn't it, well it's going to clobber X and because everything clobbers X in these routines but it's not going to clobber Y that's the important thing so we can load Y with zero um, jump subroutine let's see actually transfer y a I'll explain why in a second um, jump subroutine write 80 write 80 byte that's going to write it to the RAM pointer location which will automatically increment decrement y or let's increment y that might be clearer it doesn't matter but let's increment it um, branch if not equal back up to here which will be here okay that's going to do 256 um, the reason I transfer y to a is because I want to print I want to print a series of values I want to print 0 and then 1 and then 2 on up through so we can see how they vary in the as attributes um, but we're going to loop on y because we can increment y we can't increment a plus a we'll probably get clobbered in part of the process here um, alright so that's going to do it that's just going to do 256 spaces but let's see what that does okay so I think you can see on the screen here hopefully it's large enough we still have everything filled with a's but now the attributes are set differently. So the first one is set to zero, which is black. The color is black, um, and everything above that is turned off. Let me see if I can find in one of the books here, real quick. Um, here we are. Here's what the bits do in attribute RAM. The lower four bits set the color. RGB and I. The I is for intensity. So you have red, green, blue, and intensity. Intensity just means if that one's on, it's you've got the brighter set of colors. If it's off, you have the darker set. So zero is zero red, zero green, zero blue, and zero intensity. And so that's how you get black. Um, the other four bits, you have bit four is flash. So that's why some of them are flashing. Bit five is underlined. That's some, so some of them are underlined. It's kind of hard to. Hopefully, it's not too hard to tell, but they are. Um, it's hard. It's kind of hard to tell the underlined ones because the they they sort of merge into the ones below them, because the underline happens in the space that normally is space between two characters. Um, but they are there. Hopefully, you can see that. Reverse is reverse reverses the foreground and background but I don't know I think that's ignored because the VDC has its own reverse um, well that's not why it's ignored it's, it's ignored because there are already reverse characters in the character set um, and so you can just use them you don't have to set this bit maybe they are well no they are reversing okay I see them now like in the second row these all have different background colors and then they have a foreground the gray the dark gray foreground color okay so the reverse I thought I read somewhere that it's ignored but it says unfortunately no direct use is made of this bit well it is it does seem to be using it but I guess they mean 
typically it's not because you already have those characters in your character set. Anyway, um, and then alt means the alternate set of characters, and that might be why that might be affecting it too, because alt means get the character from the other set. You've got two, two 256 character sets, and on the 40 column screen you can only use one at a time. That's why you always have either capital letters and graphics characters or capital letters and small letters. Um, you can only be displaying from one of those sets at a time. On the 80 column screen, because it has its own RAM, um, it's able to hold both sets at once and so you just use that bit to say whether you want out of the first 256 character set or the second set and so that's why some of them are capital A's, some of them are small A's. Um, basically the first half are capitals, the second half are smalls. And so these are all the things you can do with the attributes. Besides colors you can also do these other things. Um, so that's how the attribute RAM works. Let's see. And so I guess the thing to do would be to I'm just I'm trying to think of what routines to set up that you might want to commonly call on that. I guess one would be to set the color or to set the attributes for a particular location. So just like we can write a character to a particular location in screen RAM based on X and Y coordinates, we might want to be able to set the attribute at a location that way. Um, so let's see here. We have the routine position ADXY, which positions the RAM pointer at X and Y in screen memory. We could very easily have one that does the same thing, but in attribute memory. Um, there, let's have it. Um, so position atra eighty x y. Some of my some of my names are probably not the best because they're not tremendously consistent, but um, yeah, you kind of have to clean that sort of thing up as you go, I guess. When you're not planning the whole thing out ahead of time with flow charts and all that kind of business, um, you do have to kind of correct as you go. It's kind of like building a house. You build your basement and then you have a certain amount of um, certain amount of flexibility or a certain amount of error allowed in the basement and then when you build the next layer on top of that, you build the, the first floor on top of that, you correct for any any give that there is in the basement. You keep correcting as you go up. It's a little like that. Um, Alright, so added... So this is going to be basically the same thing. We're going to take X and Y. We multiply Y by 80, add X to it to get our location. And then we just need to add the attribute address instead of the screen address right here and do that. Okay. So now we have a routine to position anywhere in particular in attribute RAM. Um, all right. So let's see, how do we want to use that? Well, here's something we can use for sure. We have a routine that fills the screen with a character. Let's have a routine that fills attributes with a character, or with a byte. It won't be a character in this case, but it'll be a byte. So let's have let's be able to fill the screen RAM with that. Now we don't want to move in this in the case of printing a character, we're moving we move the screen RAM pointer to zero zero on the screen. In this case we want to move it to 
the beginning of attribute RAM. So let's have another let's have another routine for that. Let's see, so move attribute or move RAM pointer to zero zero in attribute RAM. It can get a little confusing at times keeping track of, okay, you've got screen RAM here, you've got the attribute RAM there. Um, hopefully I'm getting everything changed that I need to change. Um, so fill AD Actra then, fill attribute RAM, we'll move, change this to move AD Actra zero zero and then okay I guess that's all we have to do there so fill AD Atra let's add that up here and then we also whoops We made a new move AD Atra. Okay. So if we want to fill attribute RAM with a byte to clear out our all our flashing and stuff, let's do that. Um So if we just want to make the color of everything black, we'll load A with zero, fill AD extra. Is that what I called it? I did. Okay. So let's just fill the attribute RAM with zeros, and that should set everything to black. No flashing. No. No whatever. So, um, in case I didn't explain it well enough, I think I explained it last time, but in case I didn't, or not well enough, um, every location screen RAM has a location attribute RAM. So there's 2,000 screen locations and 2,000 attribute locations. They match up, you know, one to one. Um, and so each location attribute RAM controls the, the attributes of the same, lo you know, of its corresponding location screen RAM. So. Um, every time you write a character, if you're dealing with attributes and colors and stuff, every time you write a character, you're probably going to also want to set its attributes unless you, unless one attribute basically works for the whole screen. Like right now, I've just set the whole screen. I've set all the locations to color is black, no flash, no no um, no underline, you know, whatever. Um, let's do eighty. Now this will turn on the alternate character set for each location. Which gives us flashing A's. Okay. I didn't really expect that. It's giving us well, it's giving us flashing and reverse. It's, well, I guess you can't really tell if they're yeah, you can. They're reversed and flashing. That's weird. Um, oh, sorry. I made my. I have to make them. I have to make a decimal hexadecimal mistake every time, or it probably won't feel right. Um, eighty is not eighty. It's, um, it's okay. There we go. Just with the attribute bit set and the color set to zero as black, then we get the alternate character set, which means we get a small a instead of a large a. Um, that's what I was doing there. Um, let's underline them. So underline is bit five. So set this to set bit five makes this an a. If you look at it and if, if you do it in binary, I think I think we can do binary in this assembler. 
1010000. Let's go with four. Or <laughs> I can't. <laughs> there are no fours in binary. Sorry. Um, so we have second character set with this one, underline with this one, and then green with this one. R G B intensity. So green. Let's make it a. Well, let's just leave it at that. I think that I think it'll do that. Talking about the assembler there. And, okay, that's probably very hard to see. Um, but now we have underlined A's on top of. Uh, let's, let me change the background color. Uh, if I know how to do that. There we go. That's a little easier to see. Um, I just do that in basic because it's quick. So setting the um, alternate character bit means you know get the get the character from the second set of characters which has the lowercase a you know has lowercase and uppercase instead of uppercase and graphics. Um, this bit is the underline bit, so now they're underlined. And then these four bits set the color, and in this case we've got you know, no red, green, you know, red is off, green is on, blue is off, and intensity is off. If we set like red on, green off, blue on, intensity on, let's see what we get. And let's also Palette, that's fine. I don't like the, the flashing is annoying. Let's not do flashing. Um, okay, so red and blue combine to give you purple. We're still we're still underlining, and it's a bright purple because it's because we set the intensity bit. If you turn that off, we'll get a darker purple. So um, the colors don't quite match up with the 40 column colors because this is RGB. Um, so, but one thing about it is that it is easy to tell what color you're going to get because it's RGB. You just have to think about, okay, what do you get when you combine red and blue or green and blue or, you know, whatever, um, if you're familiar with those. And then the intensity bit just tells you you're going to get the, the brighter or darker version of that. All right. So that, I think, will cover it for the attribute stuff for now. We may find more uses for that later, but we'll just have to write the routines as we find them. I want to move on to the graphics bitmap of the 80 column screen. I don't know if we're going to have a cause to use it in any of our programs anytime real soon, but I, I do want to cover it. I do want to use it eventually for something. Um, so what I'm going to do for that is, first of all, I'm just going to write this whole file to another one called V80, VDC 80 g lib, G for graphics, because I don't think we're ever going to use the text routines and the graphics routines at the same time. I, but the program is going to use one or the other, so I don't want to put them all in the same file. Um, so let's see, we're not going to need, we're not going to need to print a screen. We may need to clear, although I don't know. Some of these routines, basically what I'm getting at is some of these routines we need to keep. We won't need the init 80 text. And for that matter, back over here, we don't need init 80 graphics. So let's just keep the text stuff in one file and the graphics stuff in the other. They both need these read and write to the register routines, so we're keeping those in both files, but otherwise everything's going to be end up different. Um, so this can go away. Alright, so in 880 graphics sets up the graphics chip by basically by setting this high bit in register 25 puts it in graphics mode. Um, now the reason we're probably not going to be using this in anything real soon is that the graphics mode is pretty limited as long as you only have 16k of RAM which is what the stock 128s have. 
Um, I talked about this a little last time, but um, you've got a 640 by 200 screen, and so with each with each sorry with each location on the screen taking a bit, you end up basically using the whole 16k of RAM or very close to it um, for your graphic screen without any color information with just on or off for each dot you already you've already used up the whole 16k so to have color along with that you have to either give up part of the screen shrink the screen to re to free up some ram which is a crummy solution um, you know we're already you know our resolute we're already compared to modern systems we already have a tiny screen a tiny resolution anyway you don't want to lose any of it um, so you can either shrink it by about three lines to give you enough RAM freed up for color, or you can just write your program so that it only works on the 128s that have the expanded 64K of 80-column of, uh, RAM, which the 128Ds in the U.S. had, the, the metal-cased metal uh, DCRs, um, and a lot of people expanded their 128s, but still... You have to assume there are stock 128s around that don't have that. So for them, you're pretty much stuck. Like I said, you either have to shrink the screen or you're stuck with your graphics just being one color, you know, single color graphics. Um, so that's why, you know, as far as like for a game or something, we're probably not going to be using this because it is it is so limited. Even if you even if you write for the 64K RAM and have color, you're still limited to two colors within each 8x8 cell. Um, and compared to the 40 column screen where you have multicolor mode where you can get four colors into each, into each cell, um, it's just pretty limited. Now, the cells here are half the size, so it, it seems like it would almost work out as well. And I, I do want to I do want to use it. I do want to try it for something. Um, I don't know if the game I'm planning in the other series right now um, is really the right thing for that, but um, we'll see how it goes. Like I said, I, I don't want to write anything that demands you have 64K of RAM. I don't want to leave out people with stock 128s. We're already, we're already a pretty small niche as it is. Um, all right. So... The 80 column, or the, um, let's see. First of all, there are no attributes. Well, let me leave that. There can be attributes, like I said, if you have extra RAM, but we're not going to use them for right now. Um, so, let's see. We've got our init, the graphics routine. We can still use set RAM pointer because we still need to point into RAM. Um, we still need to write bytes. So we still need that stuff. We we definitely still want to be able to to repeat bytes. Um, we can still have this, but it's not going to be the same because now now our x and y coordinates can be 640 by 200, not 80 by 25, because now we. Um, so we're going to have to deal with that. For one thing. Our x coordinate now doesn't fit into a byte. If we're talking about a dot somewhere on the screen, our x coordinate is going to have to be two bytes because we've got to. It's got to be able to go up to 639. Um, so we're going to have to fix that. Um, let's see. We have. Well, we don't. We don't need that. Let's just get rid of that one for now. If we need it, if if we decide to expand this later, we can we can replicate this one easy enough. Um, print eighty char. We're not printing any characters. Um, we don't want to mess with attributes. I said, well. I keep changing my mind on that, but um, that's still we can still use the, well we can still use that I guess 
or keep it. We don't have to destroy it. Um, fill. There is no attribute RAM now. Let's just, just get rid of the attribute stuff for now. Like I said, I, I don't want to be tempted to start writing stuff that you can't use without extra RAM. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. All right. We're not going to be printing any strings. Um... We will need to. We will want to be able to clear, clear the graphics screen. Definitely. Um, we may want to be able to fill the RAM. Let's call this clear eighty RAM. Make it a little shorter. With value in a, it's not it's not a character anymore. Um, yeah, we don't need that. We don't need that. And then we're gonna fix that one. We still need that. That. Okay. All right. So clear eighty is gonna become clear eighty RAM. And fill 80, it's going to become fill 80 RAM. I got rid of this. We've got to fix that one. Okay. So let's let's tackle this one first. Fill 80. Um, now we're filling the whole 16K of RAM because now now with the bitmap screen. Um, but the process still works the same. You still write to, um, you know, I shouldn't have got rid of that one routine. You still write to the RAM the same way. Let's, let's go back over here and get move 80 text. Because we still, I think I still want a routine that can just go ahead and move Actually, no, we don't need that. We don't need that. I just realized why. Because it's always got to start at zero, because there's no room for it to start anywhere else. Um, so, we still want a routine to move it, but it's not going to have to. Yeah. So it's not a screen RAM pointer, it's just it can just load it with zero and oops, what I do. Okay. So all we're doing here move eighty graphics or let's let's say move what do we want to call it? Move 80 pointer to zero, 0, So we're just going to move it to zero, 0, It's not zero, 0 on the screen now. It's just zero, 0 in memory. It's just the, the first location in memory because with our graphics bitmap, that's where it has to start. It can't be moved anywhere else because they don't have room to put it anywhere else. So move 80 pointer zero, 0, All right. Then we write the byte whatever byte we're filling the screen with, we write it and we were writing it 2,000 times now we need to write it 16,000 times um, and so we were looping 8 times to get 2,000 so now we're going to have to loop 64 times to get 16,000 that sounds right to me um, actually, no. Or, yeah. No, that is right. Yeah. Because if we, if we think about it, we've got 640 by 200 dots. That's 128K of dots. But each 
each byte holds eight of the dots and so that's where you get 16,000. So we're going to fill 16,000 locations with whatever byte we're saving. We're not dealing with individual dots yet right now, we're just filling bytes. We'll get to the dots in a second. Um, this is just to fill the RAM with a particular pattern. And I think I think that should do it. And then if we want to clear it, we don't want to put a space, we want to put zero. Because we're not putting in a character now, we're putting in the we're putting in the value of a particular set of eight dots on the screen. So we just want to put a zero if we're clearing it. Alright, let's come back to our test file here. So now we want to init 80 graphics and then clear 80 RAM, I guess. And then let's get rid of this. Then let's wait for a key. And then let's fill it with something. So let's fill it with a binary value here so we can see what it should do. And jump to subroutine with fill 80 RAM. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do here. We're going to init the 80 column graphics screen. That should turn, you know, turn it to the graphics bitmap. We're going to clear it, so it should be clear while it waits for a key. Then once we press a key, it should fill it with this value, 1010110. And you can probably guess what that should do. Uh, let's see here. Oh, we got a problem. Found end of file instead of da da da. Uh, I must have gotten rid of a. Must have gotten rid of the, the thing at the end of the zone. Let's see, because here's where we start the zone. Yeah, no, there it is. Why am I? Why are we missing it? Um, oh, well, did I need to change the name of it? Oh, oh, oh. need to load the other file here. Did I, did I mess this one up somehow? Yeah, that's where I messed it up. I got, because so I took out the init 80 graphics and that was right there. So let's change this back for just a second just to test that. Yeah, that's fine. We just need to switch then and test. Sorry, sometimes I don't explain things very well when I'm figuring it out, but um, I probably should have created a different test file, but I just want to switch over so that it's loading the graphics library instead of the text library here. Um, Alright. So if we run it, it cleared the screen, and now I'll press a key, and it filled the screen, but... It seems like it filled it fully and not what I expected it to do. Um, unless, oh, I bet I know what it is. We probably have the same foreground and background color. That's one thing we still have to do. Um, let's see, let's make a routine for that. Wrong one. Let's make a routine for that. Um, set 80 graphics. Set, let's see. G colors. Let's call it that. Set 80 G colors. Um, set foreground color. Well, actually, it's the same thing. I'll show you in a second here. 
set foreground and background color for graphics mode. All right, let's go to the book. When you're in graphics mode, assuming you can't use the attributes because you only have a 16K of RAM, which is what we're assuming, um, your foreground and background colors are determined by register 26. So the background color is the low 4 bits, foreground color is the high 4 bits. And so we need to set that. I'm guessing right now it just happens to be set to where they're the same color. That's what that's my guess. So we just want to set them to different colors. So we'll pass pass the color set in A. And to do that then we just want to load, did I say 26? Yes, register 26. Load A or we already have A set. simple enough. Um, I'll, I'll clean up the documentation later. Um, wrong thing. Alright, so after we init, let's load A with, um, it doesn't really matter what we use, let's just use two different, two colors that we know will be different. Um, one and zero for the two colors and jump to um, what did I call that routine? Set ADG colors. Alright, let's try that. Nope, oh, we're still getting the purple screen. Hmm. I wonder I wonder if I'm not turning off. Yeah, I'll bet that's why I'm not. So that my vice is set up to have the 64k of RAM, and so I'll bet it's still it's still using the attributes, even though I said we don't want to use the attributes. Um, what we have to do to fix that is when we init the 80 column right here, we're just setting the high bit, we also need to clear the sixth bit. Uh, if we come back to the book, bit seven, the one we're setting, is the one that sets graphics um, graphics mode, the graphics bitmap. Bit six is the attribute one, and it's the one that determines whether you're using attribute RAM or not. So. Um, we need to clear that bit. So to do that, before we or it, we'll end with, um, got to think here, let's put it in binary to make it easier. If you want to, if you want to clear a bit, you just end that particular bit with a zero and leave all the other bits at one. So you do it like that. Okay. So that's going to, that's going to clear bit six while leaving all the other bits alone. I think I'm one bit short. Yeah, okay. So that'll clear bit six and then oaring with 80, which looks like this, sets the high bit. All right, so that's what we're doing there. All right, cleared the screen. All right, that's more like what I was looking for. Um, you probably can't tell what it's doing, so let me let me change values here. Instead of 1010110, let's make it. Let's just put two ones. All right. Um, and on the colors, let's see. Actually, there's probably a better choice of colors. Um, yeah, let's. That makes more sense. Let's go F0. That way the foreground will be bright white. And the background will be dark. will be black. Um, yeah, let's do it that way. We, we might switch those around. It might look better the other way. Press key. Alright, I think you can tell better now. We've got lines. We've got vertical lines now. So, 
it's printing you know the one it's printing that pattern all through RAM and so that's that's creating vertical lines it's like if you take this and repeat it you know that's what it's doing all down through memory it's doing it's doing that and so you can see the vertical lines where the ones are um, so that's what happens when you fill RAM with a particular value if you fill the whole thing you know that's what you're going to get is that kind of pattern um, let's try swapping the colors 0f make it a white background and a black foreground and yeah that's a little harder to see probably but same idea you've got black vertical lines um, on a white background all right so that's how you use the graphics screen now the next thing is going to be how do you print a particular dot how do you fill a, a dot on that screen well we're going to want to change our position 80 routine so that it will find a particular byte um, well actually we're probably going to want to change it a little more than that um, first of all we're going to need we're going to need to pass in like I said since the X coordinate can be over 255 we've got to pass in a 16-bit value for the X coordinate and then Y since Y is still 200 we're okay on that um, position the RAM pointer at let's see let's put let's keep let's keep Y as the Y coordinate but let's put the X coordinate in X and A with A being the high byte of that all right now I've got to think a little bit we still have to multiply y by 80 we still have or no we don't hold on <laughs> um, yeah we still have to multiply y by 80 because we're still it still takes 80 bytes to go across the screen even though we're not dealing with characters now we're dealing with with bit with a bitmap but it's still the screen still goes across in bytes and so finding the byte that we're dealing with we still have to multiply by 80 to get the what to deal with the y coordinate so we do that here all right so we do that and then we get to this point let's see okay so right here we say okay we have y times 80 in low 80 high 80 which is just two zero page locations we set up right up here all right so then things are going to change because now we have the x value in x and a okay and the first thing we have to do with that is divide it by eight because we want to find which byte on the screen going across are we dealing with so we've got to take that 16-bit value and divide it by eight um, the simplest way to do that we're going to want to just go ahead and put it in a memory location um, I think because we can't rotate X we can rotate a but we can't rotate X um, and that's how you divide by eight is rotate something three three times to the right um, okay so let's see let me think 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 this stuff will, that stuff there will probably go away but I'll wait and be sure um, this video is gonna run long if I do this but I think I'm gonna anyway right clear a point at
in bitmap. All right, that's what we're going to call it. Write 80xy. Okay. Let's write 80gxy. All right. Um, <clears throat> so we've dealt with the y. We've got that in low 80, high 80. We're going to need a couple of more places here. We don't need string anymore. We don't have any strings in this version for graphics. So low x and high x. Um, coordinate of bitmap. All right, so low x and high x are going to be our. Um, actually, let's call them. Nah, that, that would annoy me. Um, all right, so low x, we don't need space anymore here either. So low x and high x are going to be where we keep track of the x coordinate while we work on it. So right here at the beginning before we load a with 0 and clobber it, we need to store that into high x and store x into low x. All right. We're also going to want to and, and I got some of these ideas from the books. Um, we're going to want to store or push on the stack the um, status register because what we're going to do is we're going to use the carry flag to indicate whether we're whether we want to write or clear this point that we're um, that we're talking about. So set carry flag to doesn't matter to write clear it to clear. That makes sense. All right. So when we actually get to that point of either writing or clearing the bit, we'll, we'll get our flag back. But for right now, we're just pushing it on the stack, so it's safe there for us. All right. So we get down here. We've multiplied y by 80. Now we need to divide x by 8. Um, but first... We need to first. We need to save x's low byte somewhere because we're going to need. Basically, you got to figure out two things with the x coordinate. You got to figure out which byte are you working on, and which dot in that byte, you know, which actual pixel do you need to are you working on. So we've got to do one and then do the other, and we've got to preserve the value of x in the meantime. So let's push x on the stack by transferring x to a and pushing it. Okay. We may need to, we'll, we'll come back for it later. Save, let's see, or wait a second. I need to do that up above, don't I? Um, yeah. Let's do that right here. Transfer x to a, push a. So here we're going to save the carry flag on the stack. And here we're saving the low byte of x coordinate on the stack. All right. That'll do for now. So now we want to divide the value at low x and high x by 8. And that's pretty simple. We um, Rotate right, high x, and or no, we don't rotate it right, sorry. We shift it right. We don't want to pull in any curry flag that might be out there. And then we rotate right, low x. And so that way we're shifting the 16-bit value through those two locations, high x and low x. Um, yeah, that's right. And we just want to do that three times, so we'll just do that. We could put a loop around it, but I don't think a loop three times is worth it. It's faster to just do this. Um, faster execution-wise, I mean, it's a couple more bytes maybe, but not much. 
Um, so now we've divided low x, high x, we've divided our x coordinate by 8, and then we just need to add that to what we already have in low 80, high 80, and we'll have our address. Well, we'll have our address after this. Well, we don't need to do this business down here because we, we know we're starting at 0. So we'll add that to low 80 and high 80, and then we'll have, our, we'll have what we need. So let's do that. Let's make, make a comment. Divided x coordinate by 8 to get byte. Or to get horizontal byte number, let's say. Let's put it that way. All right, so we want to load A with then low x. Um, clear carry, add with carry, low 80, store that back into low 80, then do the same thing with the high x, except we don't want to clear the carry this time because we want the carry to come in if it got set by the low adding. Okay, I think that should be right. We add the two low bytes together, clearing the carry just in case, or not just in case, clearing the carry because you always clear the carry before you add the first thing. And then the second time we add with carry so that if the carry got set by this add up here, it gets pulled in. So now we have address of byte to work on in low 80, high 80. All right. We don't need this anymore. We just replaced that. We don't need this because we know we're starting at zero. We don't have an offset to add. All right. So now we know what byte we've got to work on. Now the question is, which which bit in that byte do we work on? Do we um, do we change? Um, that's where it gets interesting. Um, okay, I'm just trying to think of how to how to explain this. The first, let's say, the, let's say you're you're dealing with the very first byte on the screen. You want to set the very first bit, so you want it to look like this. That's what you want the. The, the top left corner of the screen to look like is one zero right, right now it looks like this but you want it to look like this one just one zero 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 and so you pass it an x coordinate of zero because zero is the first the first you know the first uh, bit on the screen the first location on the screen so how do you get from zero to that so you pass it a zero and you want it to do this okay what if you pass it a one well, then you want it to do this. That's the second. You know, one would be the second location on the screen. If you pass it a two, you're wanting it to fill the third location on the screen. Assuming here we're we're filling, you know, we're turning bits on instead of off. So we keep going like this. Three would be the third bit. You know, bit three going across. Four would be bit 4, but I think what you can probably see is this is backwards from the normal way we talk about bits. We normally talk about bit 0 being the rightmost bit. Let me finish this just to... and 7... okay. We normally talk about this this bit right here being the 0 bit and this being this here being bit 7, so it's like it's backwards, it's flipped. Now, you can do you can you can do this in math. What you have to do is say, okay, we'll take this value. Let's call this value x. We'll subtract it from seven. Seven minus x. Okay. We'll take that and we'll we'll take two to that power. So seven minus x. If x is zero, seven minus x is seven. 
2 to the seventh power gives you this. Likewise, down here, 7 minus 7 gives you 0, 2 to the zeroth power gives you 1, which is this. The problem is you don't have to do that because that's a bunch of math. Now in assembly you can do the 2 to the power of by shifting. What you'd have to do is you'd have to say, okay, 7 minus x, now I got a number, now I shift, now I put a 1 like this, I, I put a 1 here, and now I'll shift it 7 minus x times to the left, and I'll get whichever one I want here. So let's say you want to, let's say you want 6, you do, okay, 7 minus 6, that gives you 1. So put a 1 right here and then shift it one time to the left and you've got this. Again, the problem is that's quite a bit of calculation um, to have to do every time you put it down on the screen. So typically the way, you, the way we do this is with a table. And so we're going to put a table at the end of the screen which is based on this right here. So let me just copy this down here. We'll use that as our guide sort of. So let's call this um, on table. And to turn a bit on then we've got to, okay so we're going to put these in order from 0 to 7 so we're, we're sort of turning the, we're sort of turning it around. Since it's backwards we're going to put our table backwards. So 0, the first value, is going to be 80, because that's what this is in hexadecimal. The next one's going to be 40, then 20, 10, um, 0, 8, 0, 4, 0, 2, 0, 1. So what we've done is we've taken the bits and turned them around in our table. So if you, if you blew these each up into binary, you would have what, what we have down here. You'd have... 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and so on. 40 would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and so on. I'm putting them in hex because it's just, it's actually easier to read that way once you get used to hex. Um, that's our on table. That'll be our mask for the bit we want to turn on when we're turning a bit on. How about off our off table? This isn't as clear, but if you think about it, if you want to turn the first bit off, you're going to be ending with this this binary value. And if you turn that into hex, that is 7f. Um, the next one, let's see, now i got to think a little bit. 8 plus 2 plus 1 is uh, bf. I believe that's right. Well, yeah, you subtract, is that right, or C? I always get that one wrong. Um, yeah, that's right, 12 plus 4, yeah. Basically, we're just, we're inverting these, so where there's a bit set up here, we're unsetting it down here. So this one then becomes, or do I have that right? Uh, the second one there would be 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. That's 8 plus 2 plus 1 is 11. No, I don't have it right. It is B. Okay. All right. This one is going to be D, F, I believe, because now we want 1, 0, 1. 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. Yeah, that's D. And then last one is E, F, because now you're down to here. Okay. And now we get to here. It's just the same thing turned around, F7, FB, FD, FE. All right. So those are our two tables of masks that we're going to use to change our bits when we want to change a bit. All right. On table and off table. Did I? I guess that's okay. It doesn't, they don't have to be in a zone because they're not local, local labels. All right, so where were we up here? Um, all right, so now that we have our address of the byte to work on in low 80, high 80, <clears throat> we can get the byte from that location 
by just flipping this around to read. So we're gonna use we're gonna put high 80 and low 80 in, in registers 18 and 19 to get that byte. Then we want to mask it based on our table down there. But now we need to get X back. So we pushed X on the coordinate up here before. We got to get it back. So let's pull A off the stack, transfer it back to X. Now we can use that then as our index into our table down there, whichever table we're going to use. And that's the next thing we got to do is determine which table we're going to use. Um, but now we've got X ready for that. So now we need to pull our status register back. Remember we saved that up here too. We saved the status register at the beginning so that we have the carry flag. Now we get that carry flag back. And so now we can decide what to, which table we're going to use based on that carry flag. So we'll branch of carry clear ahead. And so this will be where we'll do the work if we're going to set the bit. So to set the bit, we've already we've already pointed this. Um, let's see, we've already read a value. Now I'm not sure. You know that might. I don't know if that increments after you read a. I guess it does. I guess it increments after you read a value. So we'll have to reset it. Um, yeah. But we have the. Let's see. Actually, okay, right here, I made, I made a mistake, because right here, we get the value in A. We get the value of the byte that we're going to work on in A, so I can't be clobbering it right here. I've got to, um, let's see, how do I want to do this? I guess I can't be doing that yet. I guess I have to get... Hmm. Maybe we need another routine. That... Um, is that RAM pointer? move this down here. All right. So we pull A back off the stack. Put that in X. <clears throat> pull the carry flag back off the stack. Hold on. Maybe I'm going to need another memory location here. Um, or maybe I can use Y. Let's, let's do it that way. Let's move this back up. <laughs> let's get... Okay, get value currently at byte. In RAM. Alright. Then let's transfer it to Y. Because I don't think we're going to use Y for anything else here. All right, then we pull A back off the stack. That's our, what was A again on the stack? I don't even remember now. Oh, that was just our X that we saved. So we're getting our X back off the stack is what we're really doing. Then we're getting the carry flag back off the stack. Now, based on that, we need to figure out what to do with A. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. So... Basically, I just needed to be able to do something with A while I did this right here because you can't you can't trans you can't pull off the stack into X or Y. You have to pull off the stack into A or into the status register, but not into the other um, 
index registers and so I just needed a place to put A. Basically I just needed to get two things through A at the same time sort of and so pop one of them into Y, get the other one back off the stack and then pop Y back to A. Um, I think I had to do that. We'll see. Um, so now we get to here jump ahead if clear if clearing a bit okay so what we want to do here then we want to do to a we, we want to mask a with the value from the table indexed by x and so a already has the value that's from the byte in ram and so we want to since we're setting a bit in this case we want to or it with the value from on table indexed by x and if we're not doing that and then we've got to jump ahead let's see that's always going to set something so we can jump ahead branch of not equal ahead to there um, because there's no way for that to set to zero so that'll branch otherwise if we're going to clear the bit we need to end it with off table comma x and then there's our and then there's our plus plus okay so our decision based on the carry flag is just either we want to or it with the value with the mask from the table to set a bit or we want to end it with a mask from the off table to clear the bit and so let's see yeah. and now we've got a value in A that we want to write back to that same location um, and so I think I'm going to have to save A again because pretty sure when we read this right here, it, it incremented this, regis this register pair. And so uh, here, let's do it. Let's transfer A to Y. So I think we've got to do this again. In fact, I didn't even read it yet. We've got to go back and fix that. Um, okay, let's go up here. This didn't actually get... Okay. I think I'm, I'm forgetting something here. I, I think I need to be using these routines better. Set RAM pointer and write 80 byte do I have a maybe that's it I don't I don't have a read 80 byte routine let's create one we don't pass anything We'll return byte at current RAM pointer in A. Okay. I think I could be using those routines rather than repeat rather than replicating so much stuff up here. Um, But I do I do clobber which I think it'd make more sense. Do I use this anywhere? address in 
low 80, high 80. Let's just do that. Let's not be, because that's where I'm putting them to work on anyway, is in low 80 and high 80. That's where I'm putting them in here. So I'm just going to end up getting them back out of there anyway. And then, all right, so low X with 19, low A with, um, yeah, X is the low bite, low A from low 80. Write that, and then I don't need this here. Low day with high 80. Okay, that I think that makes more sense. Let's just use low 80, high 80 as our as our address pointer into this, since we're not going to be dealing with x and y text type coordinates. Um, I think that'll work better. So up here, then, to get the value currently at the byte in RAM. Let's see right here we've put okay so yeah we've put our thing in low 80 high 80 so we just need to call set RAM pointer and then read 80 byte or write 80 byte and nothing down here clobbers Y anymore so that's good so let's come back up here pointer and then read 80 byte all right okay and then the same thing here we can sub jump 17 set ram pointer and then write 80 byte. Okay, why did I transfer A to Y? I guess because setting the RAM pointer is going to clobber A. So I needed to transfer it to Y, that's right. And then transfer it back here so that we can write it. I feel like I've probably broken several things in the process of this, but. Um, see what happened this this is bothering me right here something feels wrong right here but um okay so we get we set up low 80 high 80 by multiplying y by 80 dividing the x coordinate by 8 to get the the amount to offset that by across the screen and we end up with Yeah, good. So we end up with, yeah. I guess I didn't actually have to add the high X here because the high X is always going to be zero by this point. By the time you divide, you take a number that can only be at, at its most 639, you divide it by 8 you're not going to have a 16-bit value anymore. You're guaranteed to have an 8-bit value, but I guess no, that's okay. That's something to think about in the um, refactoring process, I guess. Okay. Um, all right, let's assume that all works. I need to we need to test some things before we <coughs> um, before we try to write any more. So write 80 GXY is supposed to write a point at let's show, let's copy this over to our or let's I'll clean up the documentation later but because this one's already running long. All right. We want to write or clear a point at x slash a and then y as the coordinates in the bitmap. And we're going to set the flare, set the curry flag to write it, clear it, clear it. So back to our test. All right. So that's that's to remind us how it works. 
All right, after we've cleared it, we don't need to wait for a key anymore. We'll do the weight down here just so that it doesn't break out until we're done looking at it. So let's say, where do we want to, what bits do we want to turn on then? Um, well, let's just turn on a bit at 10 slash 10, I guess. So load A with 0, load X with 10, load Y with 10. I don't know if we'll even be able to see a single bit very well on the screen, but we'll try that first. Jump to subroutine, write 80 GXY. We also have to set the carry to sit, to write it, to make sure that we're writing it. Okay. Hey, no, no syntax errors. Well, <laughs> it, um, I think it wrote it, sort of. I, th I think it wrote... I think it wrote the rest of the byte instead of the bit I wanted. If you think about it, the tenth the tenth bit across, and it's kind of hard to tell because the background and the border are the same color, but um, the tenth bit across would be... well, starting at zero, would be the third bit in the second byte in that row. Um, hmm. Well, let's, for testing purposes, let's move it to zero. Let's do the very first bit on the screen. It should be a little easier to tell what's going on with that. Actually, it probably won't, but Okay, we just got a single bit that time. Um, probably can't see it in the video, but it, it's there. Let's go to one and one. Okay, we got a single bit again. Wish there was a better way to see these. Let's let's do okay, let's think about this a bit. Let's loop um now this this clear this clobbers everything and so we can't um we can't loop with our registers if we're gonna loop around this. So we've got to have some other locations to, to loop with. Let's, um, we'll, let's say my x uh, byte my y byte 0 and we need two x we need two bytes for our x coordinate and one byte for our y coordinate so let's do very well no that's right because we're passing it an a so let's do a my a also this isn't anything I would do this way in a program probably this is just to um, this is just for testing so let's load them all with zeros to begin with. And let's store A into my A. Store X into my X and Y into my Y. Actually, that's dumb, isn't it? I could just do this. Okay. Then. Want to set the then our loop is going to start here. Then we want to increment 
my y and increment my x and then branch let's see branch if not equal head and then increment my a and then their plus will be here and then from my A, load X from my X, and load Y from my Y, so that when we call this, things are set up right. So this is going to be our where we branch back to. Um, I'm just thinking about how many times to let this loop. I guess it doesn't matter. Um, we can break out of it any time. So we'll just jump back up to here. I think that works. And let's not do that. That's ugly. Let's not jump back up there. Let's just make, let's just Let's just do that. Let's just branch from not equal back up to there. That'll give us 255 loops. That's enough to go across the whole screen vertically. And so, okay. The idea here is we're writing to 0 .00 and then 1, 1 and then 2, 2 and then 3, 3. We're just going to go diagonally down across the screen. Should be easier to tell what we're dealing with than a single, a single dot. Okay. Yikes. Interesting. Alright, so we have some problems, obviously. Um, I think I'm going to wrap it up here since I'm already at an hour and a half. I will uh, study this a little bit and get an idea of what's going on before I come back. But um, it's pretty clearly not always masking right. It starts out, it looks like it's masking right for the first, I don't know, maybe eight dots and then something goes wrong so little little something wrong with our table lookup or something like that i didn't figure that was going to be perfect right off the bat but um, we'll get this worked out and then we can work on some drawing routines for this like i said i don't really have a project to use the 80 column graphics in mind yet but we'll come up with one eventually because um it is it is kind of fun to play with and i don't think it's necessarily as slow as um as the books say, um, it's just limited in the colors and the fact that you don't have any sprites to work with. So we'll we'll find something to do with it. But um, hope that was this this was interesting, and uh, thank you for watching.